What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today, well, we're taking the boat. We're gonna hook the rammer up to the boat. Nick's got some serious work to do. I'll explain to you what we're doing, why we're doing it, and why it's important to, you know, just take care of your stuff, you know, keep it clean. And real quick, before you guys ask me about my tires, yes, I'm still getting rid of them, they're still for sale. You guys are DMing me, asking me if they're still for sale, yes, but the problem that I'm having is all these companies that I've tried are on a nationwide back order. Toyo, Nitto, Falcon, all these companies, you know, are, there's nothing. I mean, this market is dry. With this whole COVID BS going on, it shows how much stuff we get from China. I mean, you know, I, mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but I cannot get nothing. That's why, guys, I haven't sold them because Nitto, they told me, I called, I even called the main, like Nitto themselves, Nitto. And they said, yeah, check back in a couple months. For any of their Nittos, I even tried like the ATs. I tried discount, I tried at so many places and nobody has, tie. even Toyo MT, then Toyo RT, I just called for the hell of it just to see. Toyo's out of every, everybody's on back order for these tires. So that's why I still got them, guys. All right, let's get a little cold start for you guys. It's like 95 degrees outside right now. Bam. All right, Rammer is hooked up to the boat, and now we're off to go see Genesis Detailing. And the reason why, guys, well, this thing, the paint is like horrible. There are, and when we get to Nick's shop, I will show you, but there are so many swirls, and this is so faded. It may not look faded to you guys, but this thing is very faded, swirly, just nasty looking, and we gotta get it fixed, and then, once um, this is all done, we gotta figure out a way to get this boat off the trailer so I can get this uh, trailer repowder coated and get new rims and fix this trailer up next. You know, I gotta say guys, so a lot of you guys have asked me, you know, how do you like the truck so far, Eddie? It's been a little over a year. You know, are you liking it? Are you, you, you know, would you go back to GM? So, I love this truck, don't get me wrong. Everything about this truck, the motor, the interior, you guys, was flawless. But one thing I gotta say with, you know, Ram is, your guys' transmissions suck. I mean, 68 RF, this ice in, I mean, and don't tell me, oh, because it's tuned. No, this transmission did this when the truck was new also. Uh, Big Lou's done this, I've talked to a lot of people. These transmissions, they're just like so lazy. Like, it, it's not a get up and go truck. It's a, all right, let me take my time, you know, give me, give me going first. It's, it's sort of like a train, you know, a train is, starts off slow and then chugs away and goes same thing with this I think tow is amazing I mean I, I love the truck it's great uh, but I, I will I would say and I understand you know this it's made for towing it's a 3500 I understand you know it's not made to race but you know when you want to get up and get up and go like that initial climb you know if you're starting from stop and you want to get up and go um, this transmission is horrible and I, I you know I have you guys ask me well what are you gonna do about it what are your plans so I would like to, um, I've been looking, but I want to get rid of this transmission, regardless if it's good or bad. Uh, if somebody comes out with a transmission, you know, I want to get rid of this transmission right away. I can't stand this transmission. And I have seen Alice and they have some adapters playing. Yes, I called them, but they got nothing for this truck, unfortunately, right now. Not saying I would go then Alice and they got Suncoast, uh, they got ATS, they got a lot of good transmissions out there. But uh, before you guys ask me how do I like the truck, I love the truck, I just hate this transmission with a passion. All right, guys, we have arrived here at Genesis uh, Detailing. Got the boat in, it's a, it is a nightmare because their door is so small and they have no available space over there. What are you looking at there, Jimmy? You don't like my antenna? Yeah, antenna. Yeah, it's okay. It's, ben ben it's bendable, bendable. So now, guys, we're gonna use this to try to uh, maneuver the boat rack. So we gotta push the boat all the way back and angle it uh, like this way. Oh, we can move it. Here, hold on, let me gotta put the camera down. All right, guys, we finally got the boat in here after a lot of manpower. So the problem that we were having is this door is so small. So once I pull the truck in, this is a tiny, dude, it's only a 10 foot wide door. So everything in your world is no, it's a small door, especially, I mean, the parking lot, you can't come straight back. You got to maneuver and turn and do this. So not, we stuck, we stuck this thing on it and uh, maneuvered the boat around much better because they need to get uh, the, these cars out of here once they're done. And this thing takes up all the room. So, but what Genesis is doing, well, Genesis, go ahead, explain what you're doing to this thing. All right, one sec. All right. Uh, we're going to start off with doing a decon wash on it. Water this wash list and put it up, pulling the thing back out again. All right. So we're going to do it in here. 
the pump sprayers, wash it all down. We're gonna do a clay bar, removing any sort of oxidation, bonding contaminants around the paint. Not bad, I mean, obviously Eddie takes care of, care of it. It's got a lot of swirls though. Yeah, like so if bad. you look right here, use that light behind us, you can see all that. Yeah, really that's, see. that's really, look at that guys. Oh my goodness. Paint's oxidized. That's bad. Not waxed. It's got a bunch of swirls and scratches in it. Yeah. We're gonna do a one step, not one step. We're gonna start off with the first step of correction. It's gonna be a heavy cut. Then we got some new product. We'll try it out. I'm gonna make a video on this too. So oh yeah, we got the there. marine stuff. Yeah, so we got the marine product for this. Then start off with the initial cut, get all the bulk of the majority of the swirls and scratches out. And it's gonna leave a lot of haze behind, so we gotta polish that out. So the drooling step should be the follow up step. Bam. Then. Then some ceramic. Yeah, I'm gonna see how far down we go. Well, we don't need to go far. Just do the paint, but we don't need to do our hair because this part's in the water. I was so. just thinking, polish this up. Might as well just pull it straight. Yeah, I mean, if you want to polish, if you think you can do <laughs> anything, but because this thing sits in the water like it's like this. When it's driving, it doesn't point up, you know. I mean, it doesn't point up. You're you're flat level, but basically, guys, this thing. The the problem is is it's a nightmare to clean because it's got no protection, no wax, nothing on it to pretty much keep clean. You know, it's, yeah, you get a lot of water spots and of course you're in the water, but taking those off is a nightmare and scrubbing and it's just, and, and, and you can see, I mean, right here, it's like cloudy. There's no, there's no shine to it. You see that? It looks like it's, it's very, it's very dull, very hazy. So, uh, I don't even know if we can get that out, but he's gonna try to get that out and we'll see. Do some test spots. So we'll do the, yeah. the correction and we'll protect it to make it easier. Jacob's confident. We'll see. Oh, okay. Um, undersell over delivery. See. That's okay. He's gotta he's learn. Okay. <laughs> so well, once for the protection, we're using Owner's Pride Seven Year Coating. It's Ooh, an seven years. Slash Marine Coating. There's no warranty for Marine yet. They're kind of working it up. Obviously, no. it's gonna be very fine print with that. So because you can't guarantee no water spots on something that's gonna live in the water. Yeah. So what we're gonna do, coat it up, then follow up with a secondary like ceramic spray to kind of seal it in this gel coat, because gel coat's very absorbent. As for clear coat, it's very easy to layer on top. So once we do it on that, follow up, let it absorb, bond to the gel coat, it should be protected and you got your maintenance kit also. Yeah, then we're, it will be good to go. And another thing guys, you know, this wasn't at uh, my house, so it was getting destroyed. Now that we got a garage for it, I got a new cover uh, coming forward. It's gonna be in that closed garage. So it's going to be, you know, safe, protected, clean. It'll stay in good condition. Uh, the problem I had is I couldn't really maintenance this because I had no room at the house and I wasn't just gonna leave this outside baking in the sun. But now uh, we got it here and we're gonna get nice clean and then stay tuned, we got a little little surprise coming for you right above that fat cap. Right, Jimmy? Damn straight tuned. <laughs> what, 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 what the, who? What? straight, dude. So that's what, okay, okay, I wasn't sure what you, what you were talking about, but you're gonna get it, right? You got about a week? I don't know, how long do you think this will take you? A couple of years. <laughs> Wednesday, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know, like we'll five, six like days. Wednesday, hopefully, then come back Friday. A week. Mobile on Thursday, yeah. yeah. A week. Seven we'll days. Like next Wednesday. So you got seven days to make the magic happen. Good enough. All right, cool. I'll get eight days. Okay, no problem. Good enough for me. No worries. I, I don't want to try to even take it out of this garage again over here. Nah, it should be easy. Uh, you should put my truck. Your ram didn't turn. Yeah. You're turning your wheel, and the truck's still going straight. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a rammer, dude. You know, your truck's like five feet long. Yeah, it's all toasted. <laughs> Well, I don't know how good it would tow it. it. Might struggle a little bit. Rammer's back in the garage, nice and clean. Had to give her a bath, you know, she got pretty dirty. And also guys, for you guys watching this, if any of you guys know anybody that uh, can re-gear this thing, I've called everybody. Nobody makes gears for a 2019 or higher Ram 3500. I have uh, went to West Coast Gearing, I went tried Yukon. I think there's another place, AEM. Uh, I'm dying to get this thing re-geared. I just, I, I don't like the way it tows, you know. For you guys that purchases these trucks and ask me, Eddie, how does it drive with the 37s? I will say it drives good. You know, it, it's no, uh, well, I'm not gonna say it's not a big deal. To me, it's a big deal, but when you put these 37s on these trucks, guys, and, and don't, don't, you know, I, I can already read the comic, huh? My Duramax didn't know, my Ford didn't know. Yeah, BS, okay, I had a Duramax and I, dang, drove a Ford with stock tires, okay? So I got the BS, but, when you do put these uh, bigger tires on there, so this thing came with 373s. Now I'm sure you guys are probably gonna ask me, Eddie, well if you knew you were gonna put 37s, why didn't you put, or why didn't you get this truck with 410s? I tried. 
Unfortunately, I cannot, if I get four tens, it had to go automatically into a dually, and I don't want a dually, because I didn't need a dually, and I wanted the four tens because I knew I was going to put 37s. If I put, or if I got this truck with four tens, it would have put me at a 373, which that's what I like. That gear ratio to me, for what I tow, is perfect. Uh, unfortunately, it came with 373s, so I was bummed out because I knew I was going to put 37s, and that threw me down to a 342, and I hate that gear ratio. It just, it, it's, it's for towing, it's not good. It's not there. It shifts, and it's sort of, you got to wait and get up and go. So, if you guys know anybody that can re-gear these things, please let me know. Comment down below. Uh, because this is annoying and I want to re-gear this thing bad. And also guys, don't forget to go check out my new channel, Eddie's Product Reviews. We're testing all this flex seal. We're testing a bunch of stuff. I got to say, this thing uh, work pretty dang good. But uh, yeah, go check it out, Eddie's Product Review. Uh, we're doing the flex seal. We're doing the flex tape. We're doing the flex, uh, what is this one? Flex oh, seal, liquid chingus. We're, we're doing everything. And, and supposedly it even works underwater. Well, we're going to find out and see. And for you guys that were asking me about the antenna, or actually you didn't say antenna, but you are saying what the heck was that massive white box? Uh, nobody could figure out. I haven't had any of you guys actually figure it out. So I showed you guys this white box right here, which was originally, uh, it's the antenna for my uh, drone, or this was the antenna for my drone. And we upgraded it to, let me unplug this, to this bad boy right here. Now, uh, with this antenna right here, I don't want to bore you with too much drone stuff, but with this antenna right here, the drone only went about, I want to say a mile and a half, two miles. With this thing so far, uh, it claims five miles, but the problem that I'm having is I've already went three miles with that antenna, but the problem is I can't go more than three because then I got a whole butt back home because I can barely make it on battery. So I'm going to try to look for some bigger and upgraded batteries, see if I can push this thing you know, to the limit. Uh, and uh, you know get some real distance out of it if we can try to take it to the five miles and see if it really works That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys like this video Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to click subscribe. Peace Yeah